Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge Series. So, SideFX is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. Well, I just closed the file for Muscle and we're on to peak, guys. It's, it's day 19, but, but not really. Okay, so... Um, day 19 was peak. I wanted to maybe do something cool. Um, you know, a very cool mountain, maybe some snow kind of fantasy. And I could have very well tried for that. But then I thought, you know what, let me have some fun with it. I've been taking this challenge kind of seriously towards the middle and end. Um, and I decided, no, I'm, I'm going to have some fun with it. So what I decided was to take Mount Rushmore and take all of the geometry from Houdini, the base meshes, right? So Flippy and Tommy, um, Squab and Pighead and turn them into Mount Rushed work. So, you know, started with that concept and this is what the result was. Right, so coming into this, I was like, no problem, right? This is, it's gonna be a breeze. Um, all I have to do is use Houdini's height field tools, which I've used before, I've made tutorials with it. Um, I made a whole series. I was like, this is gonna be fine, right? All I have to do is set up the rock face and then project the geometry onto the cliff. I was wrong. You cannot project um, horizontally, only vertically. So. This was all fine. This is just generated with some geometry. It's a mess that I make, but it's a good way to generate the general shapes. So this I just made look as close to the shape of Mount Rushmore as I could. You then use a height field, a height field project. It projects the shapes onto your height field. Um, resample, blur, noise, terrace, erode. So all of these things are just generating the shape of the terrain. Um, I keep going. I actually want to get to my file cache so that I don't have to cache all of this out again. Um, but yeah, so I end up with this. So you use some noises, you use some terracing. All of those things give you a reasonably interesting looking terrain. You can see that the erosion cuts away into this. It's a, it's a decently nice piece of terrain. I could have done with less terracing. Um, I went a little bit overboard on the terracing. Otherwise, it's okay. And then this is where I realized that you can't project. So what I had to do was I had to convert each one of those geometries into a VDB. Right, so each one is a VDB, and you can see that they get transformed into these positions. I can template them. Yeah, so you can see all right, Tommy, Pighead, Squab, Flippy, all as VDBs. So then you take that height field, you convert it. So you convert it to a VDB, and then you use multiple VDB combines to add these to the mountain. Um, once you have that, you can convert that VDB, and you end up with this, right? So it's it's nothing amazing. It's just a bunch of test geometry stuck in a mountain and <laughs> flippies like flying full speed straight through. And um, yeah, so you end up with that. And then the rest of it is really just texturing. Oh, and the sediment thing's pretty cool. All right, so um, this sediment thing that I do, it's not actually sediment. Um, I, I named that badly because there is actually a sediment attribute on terrain. So try not to name it like that. Um, but what you can do is you can height field scatter, which I found really cool. So I just mask an area 
and height field scatter and it automatically does stamping for you. So it randomly chooses between these and places them in the correct orientation. So you end up with lots of nice little rocks. Um, you can see here that I just make a couple of different types of rocks and a sphere and this one over here. And then they all get scattered. And so it adds some really easy detail. All you have to do is delete everything except these because these actually get saved as geometry. So then you clean them and you output them. They come as packed geometry, I believe. So if you check here, yeah, 10,000 points, 10,000 packed geos. So these are all packed terrain out. So you have terrain, rocks, and trees. Right, so the trees, um, they kind of straightforward. Um, I've also translated them up because I do have, I've translated everything up, but that one's floating for sure. Um, because I had a displacement and the displacement was moving my terrain quite a bit. And so I just moved everything up so that it compensated for that. But what I do is I create some curves. So I take my terrain, I paint on a mask, scatter based on that mask. So I linear interpolate between the normal direction, which is the direction that it's pointing away from the terrain. You can see this over here. So all of these have normals. So the scattered points will pick up those normals as well. And um, it's not showing up right now. I'm not sure why. Oh, they're tiny. Okay, yeah. So you can see that each point is pointing in a different direction. Um, it's pointing in the direction of the terrain. So you just linear interpolate so that it's more or less pointing straight up, but has some variation. So you just say normal, up, linear interpolate, 80% towards up. Uh, copy lines to those, right? All that different scales. And then for each of those lines, you just resample, um, do a bit of a polywire thing using Curve U. I use Curve U so much, it's ridiculous. So yeah, you do this over here. This is all based on Curve U. So you can see over here, this is the shape that I generate in this. Um, I use that as a P scale. That P scale is used in the polywire. And then you ISO offset and scatter points into it. On the side, I just create a trunk. Super simple, it's just a polywire. Point jitter to add some interest. And then it gets merged together. Um, once you have all of your trees, you separate the points from the trunks. And then you copy some points to the leaves. Then random colors based on point numbers an attribute noise for the CD, so you multiply it, so some trees end up slightly darker green, some end up kind of brown. And then you merge that with the trunks, normals, and then I pack it. Once that is packed, you can render it with Redshift, no problem. And so I just have my little trees over there. And once it's rendered, it just looks like this. So not much going on with this one, um, not much work either. The only issue I really ran into was not realizing that you can't project, or I say can't, but maybe it's a limitation in my knowledge. Maybe you can, and I just don't know how. That's that's very much likely. Don't take everything I say as like the, the truth. There's, there's definitely things that I might miss. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching. Sorry for the brief video. I've got to go and record another one. <laughs> so I'll see you back soon. Just know that I'm recording space, same time I'm recording this one. So bye.